Hey everyone, it's Mandak um, coming at you with another video. Um, so first off, happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. Hope you all spent quality time with your mom and your family today. Um, second off, you know, happy Sunday. Um, this video is my Phillipsburg Comic Con um, haul. So if you see a TV, uh, you know, reflection in the background, it's from TV, so just ignore that. Um, but yeah, so... This was my haul from uh, Phillipsburg Comic Con and the surrounding area um, this weekend. So, you know, a couple of my friends came up from Penn State and from other areas, and we went shopping for comics. Went to Phillipsburg Comic Con. Um, so, you know, at the Phillipsburg High School in, excuse me, in the great state of New Jersey. <laughs> um, but it was fun. Um, we got a lot of stuff. Got to meet a few creators, um, most notably. Um, Walter Simonson, um, and Louise Simonson as well. Uh, Lee Weeks was there. Um, Joe Kelly was there as well. Uh, Fabian Nis Fabian Nisi Nisieza, I think that's how you say his name. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> so got to meet all of those guys, um, which was really cool. It was a very small con, not too big. Um, but yeah, my haul this week <laughs> is pretty big, um, and it's mostly because of the other stores I went to, um, I didn't get all the stuff at the con. I got a pretty good amount at the con, but not all of it. So, um, but yeah, so I'll go over it together. Um, the first thing I'll show before I get to the single issues and this collections, I'm going to show what I got signed by Walter Simonson. So, uh, the first thing I have here framed, which I just barely fit in here, kind of sticking out a little bit, is the trade paperback for Iron Man 2020. It's signed by Walter Simonson down here, as you can see. Um, so this was three dollars, but now I feel like it's a little bit more. <laughs> I mean, it's that's not what I why I do this. I mean, I do it to talk to the the creators and um, you know Walter Simonson and Louis Simonson were so down to earth. They um, you know they're really really genuine people um, and they spent time talking to us about comics and you know didn't really try to like sign and get out, get us out of line right. So um, everything was free too. Like they didn't charge anything. Um, Walter was doing this. Um, uh, this like thing for helping people in the comic industry like with their medical bills and stuff like that so you could donate so I donated um, you know a small amount of money for it but um yeah so I got this signed by him um, he actually wrote this he didn't draw draw it so um, that's so, still pretty cool though so I got that and then I had he also did sketches um, sketches were free like I said before but you know the donations were accepted so that's why I donated the money that I could because he drew this for me so you can see here this is a classic Iron Man from um, you know uh, the 1960s that Gene, he told me he's gonna draw it the way Gene Colan draw, drew it and that's awesome because Gene Colan is one of the first art artists on the Iron Man books you know once he got the um, the red and gold armor but I'm pretty sure he was drawing it before that too um, so this is really cool to own you can see the signature and the date um, you know, five eleven nineteen. So, really awesome to have a drawing done by Walter Simonson um, to put to frame up and keep. Um, all right, so let's get into the single issues. I'll put this over here actually because that's a trade. Okay, <clears throat> so the first issue I got here. Let's put these in order actually before I get there. So all these these three issues that are coming up here are all half off, um, which is why I got them because I. You know, they are a little bit more expensive, but for what they are, um, I was able to get them pretty cheap. So the first one here is Iron Man number 8. Um, and I can't tell you what what year this is from. I think this is probably 60, 65, I think, or 63. I'm not sure. But you see here the gladiators on the back. Um, and uh, I think that's what it is. No, uh, is that what it is? I think that's what his name is. Could be wrong. But you can see here anyway, um, the Iron Man drawing on the front of this cover is like an iconic piece of art. Um, and I think this is either Don Heck or Gene Colan. I think it's Don Heck. But um, you can see here, this uh, cover you know, has art from Iron Man that you see on a lot of different like posters and shit. So it's really cool to own this. I mean, this is, a, this is I think, to date, probably my oldest Iron Man issue that I own now. Um, so it's really cool to have, to be able to get one of these. I paid $7 for it, which I think is a good deal considering how old this issue is. 
um, and it's not in terrible condition. I mean, there's a, there's obviously a little crease here on the corner, um, but yeah, pretty cool. I think this the guy's name is Gladiator. I could be wrong, but yeah, cool, cool stuff. Uh, next issue I have here is another awesome cover to have. Um, it's one that I'm so happy I found for five dollars, um, and that is Iron Man number eleven. So unmasked by the Mandarin, um, and this is kind of getting into the. Um, I'm pretty sure this issue had like the you know the Mandarin unmasking him, but it turned out that the Iron Man you know that was in here was actually an LMD the whole time, and that kind of bleeds into the beginning of the end storyline where Iron Man goes toe to toe with an LMD. Um, a life model decoy, right? Um, so this is such a iconic cover. Uh, I might need to frame this because this is so cool. You can see the Mandarin's face, just really awesome. Arguably one of my favorite covers. You can see here also the mask coming off. I think that's that's also a cool little feature you have here in the end. But yeah, probably one of the best Mandarin, probably one of the best covers featuring the Mandarin in the early con early Iron Man days. So really cool to own that. Um, next book here is Iron Man number 14 and I can't remember off the top of my head who this artist is but he did a lot of stuff you know non superhero related I think and then he got into this but um this is such a cool issue you know you got Iron Man looking up at the Phantom I think this is kind of like a one off issue nothing really too important happens here but um, also got this for $10 or $5 which I think is a pretty good deal um so, yeah, really cool to nab three Iron Man issues that are, you know, back in the 60s for, I think I spent, what, $17 combined for the three of them. So I think that's a pretty good deal, about $6 an issue. Um, so, yeah, Iron Man number 14, still back when they were 12 cents, <laughs> um, which is crazy. I mean, that's just, that just goes to show you how, how much time changes. Uh, next issue I have here is... Um, what if number one? Uh, I'm not sure this is the this might be the second volume of number of the what if series. Um, sorry, the sixes are on right now, so I'm watching that as well. Um, but this is what if Iron Man was has had been a traitor. Um, so I'm assuming this is kind of playing off of like you know Iron Man being kidnapped by <clears throat> sorry the uh, Viet Cong and I guess brainwashed to fight for them or something. Um, so. Really cool issue to have. I'm not sure if this is gonna, if this is collected in the What If Classic collection. I think it. I think this is Volume Two. I don't think it's Volume One of the What If series. But uh, really cool to have. I, I own a couple of these What If issues. Um, most of them are just the Iron Man related ones. I'm not sure how many there are really. I know there's this one, and then there's one that I have uh, previously. That's What If Iron Man Lost the Armor Wars, which is a really cool issue to have. Um, so yeah, so really cool to own that. Just picked it up for a buck. It wasn't that expensive. Next book I have here is just working on completing my Riri Williams um, collection, which at this point I might as well just read the single issues. No need to get the the paperbacks. Um, but you can see here I have Invincible Iron Man number five. So I think I have issues one through seven now of Riri Williams um, run on Iron Man. Um, so I think that's like the first trade and then some. So, um, you know, I'm assuming this series didn't do well enough. That, that's the reason why all these single issues are showing up in trades, but um, or showing up in dollar bins. But yeah, so I've got that for a buck. And then the next three here, let me see if I can put them in order first and then we'll get to them, are some issues that came out during um, Marvel Legacy back last summer um, so these are obviously using the renumbering of Iron Man issues so um, this one is Iron Man 595 written by uh, Bendis so you can see here you have Riri Williams and uh, Dr. Doom as the infamous Iron Man so really cool I like the old you know um, logo and stuff like that so we'll see what this is all about um, I have the trade of this stuff so I'll probably read it in trade um, but it's cool to have the single issues as well so it's 595 then you have uh, sorry these are in order, out of order 597 so this is a really cool cover I remember when the art for this was dropped it was pretty cool to see 
So I have no idea what's what's going on in these issues, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, and then we have issue 599. So you got Iron Man um, saying, did you miss me? Tony. Uh, this whole this whole storyline is called The Search for St Tony Stark. Because I think, I'm not sure if I'm 100% correct, but I'm pretty sure he dies in Civil War 2. And this is kind of like them finding him again. I'm not sure. Could be wrong. I'm still kind of behind. I, I've, I've read parts of Bendis' run um, with the Students of S.H.I.E.L.D. Club. But it's been so long, I totally forgot what happened in there. I wasn't really paying too much attention when we read it. So I go back and reread that and kind of get up to date with Iron Man. Um... Next book we have here is Iron Man number 600, which is really cool to have. Um, you can see here all the different armors, all the different characters in the background. You know, not as good of a cover as I was hoping for a, a 600th issue, but nonetheless, it's still kind of cool to own. Um, you know, you have some old ar armors on the on the front, but I, I'm assuming there's probably a shit ton of different variants for this as well that I'm not going to really try to look for unless they're like a dollar each. But um, again, kind of cool to have a 600th issue of Iron Man, even though the math may not work out exactly correctly. <laughs> I know like the last time it was renumbered was during um, Fractions Run, so it could be right. I'm not sure. Um, so let's see here. I'll go through these real quick. Um, let's see. Put these in order. They're all out of order. So I got Iron Man. Uh, I got a bunch of infamous Iron Man stuff, which again at this point I think I'm just gonna collect in singles. Um, I'm pretty close to like having a full set for like the first two trades. Um, so I picked up uh, Invincible or Infamous Iron Man number three. All right. Also written by Bendis and drawn by Alex Maleev. Maleev. I don't think that's how you his name. Uh, I got Infamous, infamous Iron Man uh, number four. So, cool. Uh, number five. It's a pretty cool cover. These covers are pretty cool. They're like painted, it looks like. Or watercolored, I'm not sure. This one I'm not a huge fan of. It kind of looks a little bleh. So, number six. Um, you got, looks like, I don't know. I guess that's Victor Von Doom. Got number seven. And then you got number nine, which I'm pretty sure this is the the cover they used to, for the second trade paperback. So, um, you know, I'm kind of a little bit, have a few issues of the second trade paperback collected already. So I'm not sure. Like I said, I might just read this in single issue. If I find the trades really cheap, I might buy them. But for right now, you know, I'm not really into paying like $9 for a trade of Infamous Iron Man right now. Um, I usually like to pick those up for like four or five bucks at the most. But yeah, um, okay, moving on here to some more single issues. Um, this is some stuff that I picked up um, at another store, just some other Iron Man issues that I needed. So you got 306, picked this up for a buck, uh, Redemption. Um, I, don't, I think this is after the Crash and Burn so storyline. Um, so that's cool to have. And then we get uh, Iron Man 319, which I also don't own. So you can see here, this is a pretty cool cover. A lot of a lot of uh, stuff, you know, a lot of different um, shit going on here. You can see here the Force Works logo. <laughs> Obviously trying to promote that during this time. Um, but yeah, so cool stuff. So that's all my single issues. Um, we're already 14 minutes into this video, and I've, I'm only talking about my single issues, so I'll try to make the rest of this stuff quick, I guess. Um, this book I actually picked up in the dollar bin with the with the single issues as well. I don't know why it was in there, but I picked it up for one buck. Who the hell cares? And that is the uh, Tales to Astonish, um, Hulk, Wasp, and Hank Pym, um, like, one-off, one-shot story, I guess. Um, so obviously back in the 1960s, you had Tales to Astonish, which is an anthology book that turned into basically a Hulk and, and Ant-Man book. Um, so they, they shared a book, and then they got their own. Um, Hulk got its own series. Um, Ant-Man continued to be in Tales to Astonish for a little bit longer, and then kind of just went to the Avengers. But, um, yeah, this is really cool to have for a dollar, you know. Um, and it's kind of it's kind of cool, like the cover. You can see here it kind of opens like that, and then, you know. Gives you this nice piece of art right here. Same thing on the back. You have like the 
description. This is obviously pretty old, you know, um, doesn't have any spine or anything, but um, they, they also made a Tales of, of Suspense issue, like one shot thing like this, that was for Captain America and Iron Man. I already bought that. I bought it for like five bucks, so this was only one dollar, so that's cool. But um, yeah, really cool to read these. I might read it as, or at some point. They're pretty, they should only take me about a day to get through, I would think. So let me put that over here. Uh, next book I got here is something that I really wanted um, to complete my Captain America Rick Remender run. Um, I have really finished up a lot of different runs today or this during this haul um, on different things that I wanted to get. So it's really nice to have a complete run that I can go now and read it and um, you know uh, watch read it all in one sitting or one consecutive thing without having to go find something. Um, that is the book one. Um, of Rick Remender's Captain America, Cast Away in Dimension Z, Book One. Um, so again, I have the first, I have the five trades of it. So now I can go read this, um, and this is really cool because it has John Romita Jr. art, which I really enjoy. Um, I'm not sure how great his art is at this point, but you can kind of see here it's a little, it's getting there. I I, th I like his art overall. I mean, you know, as he got as he got older, I think it kind of suffered a little bit more. It, or it changed. Um, you know, he was drawing a lot like his father in the beginning, I think. But as he started to get more style, um, you can kind of see start to start to see it happening in, um, you know, his uh, Iron Man run with John Byrne, and then subsequently in his um, Man Without Fear stuff with uh, Frank Miller with Daredevil, which I think is really good. That like that that right there is like the kind of like I would say probably one of the pinnacles of his drawing career um, so yeah so got that really great to have that next thing I bought here is uh, Kazar by Mark Wade and Adam Kubert so I don't really know a lot about this um, my friend actually suggested it to me so I bought it um, not a huge fan of Kazar but again I know the character you know well enough that I could probably jump into this and you know be familiarized I'm assuming that this is like in the Savage Land um, I think that's where it is. I'm not sure. I know Shanna and Zabu is, Zabu is his, um, tiger or a saber tooth. I don't know what it is exactly, but yeah, really cool. This seems like it's in the same era as like the, um, Kurt Busiek Avengers and Iron Man stuff, like volume three, like, so like late nineties, early two thousands. Um, so the art looks pretty good. I mean, this art looks amazing actually. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited to read this, you know, new character. Um, so we'll see how it goes. So pick this up for ten dollars. I mean, a little expensive, but again, you know who the hell cares? Actually, I think I got when I got all the stuff together, the guy took a little bit of money off the top, so it kind of made it worth it. Um, next book I bought here, which is something I really needed, um, and I'm one step closer to having the complete series, is uh, Thing Classic uh, Volume Two by John Byrne. Was that my phone? I thought I heard my phone go off. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is really cool to own. So I just need um, volume three at this point, and I'll have all of John Byrne's uh, thing stuff. So this collects, I probably should have said what all this other shit collects. Uh, I I do that always. Like halfway through the, the halfway through the um, video, I'll start telling you what's in the books. <laughs> um, so this collects thing, uh, the 1983 series, so volume one, um, numbers 11 through 22, and Fantastic Four, number 274, written by John Byrne, um, illustrated by Ron Wilson and Byrne. So, lit. You know, I still have to read um, John Byrne's Fantastic Four run. I have it in Omnibus. Um, hopefully the second one gets re gets solicited and reprinted. Um, but for right now, I have the first Omni, so that's cool. Speaking of Fantastic Four, um, I was able to pick up an Epic Collection that I needed for... 15 bucks, which is a pretty good deal for this. Um, so Fantastic Four is starting to get more epics printed now. Um, I think they're up to like the fourth, you know, fourth epic consecutively, consecutively from the beginning. So that's collecting the the Jack Kirby and Stan Lee run. Um, but this is collecting the Roger Stern run on Fantastic Four. Um, you also have Engelhart, Steve Engelhart, Chris Claremont. Um, I'm not sure who what Buscema brother that is on there, but it's um, so a pretty solid creators on this team you know uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Roger Stern I like a lot of his stuff his Avengers runs pretty good his Spider-Man run is really good so I'm excited to see what he does with Fantastic Four I can't imagine this being too terrible 
Um, but yeah, this collects uh, Fantastic Four 296 through 307 and annual number 20 and Fantastic Four versus X-Men 1 through 4, which is really cool. I don't think... I don't think I've read that. I could be wrong. I'm not sure if the Fantastic Four vs. X-Men is in an omnibus. I don't think it is. I know I read Avengers vs. X-Men, um, and that's in an, uh, an epic collection. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. So, just showing some art here. This is kind of like my my sweet spot for... Um, well, that's really cool. This is kind of my sweet spot for like um, comic book writing, is like the mid, like the early to mid to late '80s into the '90s. That's usually, I think this is around there, like the, probably the mid '80s, I would say. Yeah, 1986 to '87. So I'm probably really gonna enjoy this. I think we'll see. Getting up there, fantastic four epic collections. I think I have five at this point. Um, so that's really cool. All right, um, next book here we got is uh, Uncanny X-Force Complete Collection Volume 2. So now I gotta get Volume 1. <laughs> um, and this is Rick Remender stuff. So I think this comes before, this comes before, I think, Uncanny Avengers. So um, this is, you know, just following Rick Remender through all the different books he writes. Um, so I have the uh, Uncanny Avengers epic, or not epic, uh, Omnibus. Picked that up like two years ago. Still haven't gotten around to reading it because I want to read. I wanted to get this first so I could read this and then go into that. Um, again, I'm not sure if, if I've had the order flipped, but um, yeah, this seems like a really good book. Um, you have Deadpool, Wolverine, Phantom X, Psylocke, and Nightcrawler on the team. Uh, this has Uncanny X Force 19.1 and 20 to 35. Um, so I just got to go on IST and get the first trade. I get the first complete collection, um, which collects, I guess, the first 19 issues. Um, so, yeah. So, really cool to own this. Uh, you can see here the cover is really cool. Or the spine, sorry. So, just another thick X-Men related um, book to cross off the list. Um, moving down the list here, we get to uh, Daredevil uh, by... Uh, Brian Michael Bendis Volume 3. So now this completes my Brian Michael Bendis collection on Daredevil, which is exciting. Uh, I actually plan to start reading that hopefully tonight or tomorrow. Um, get into the first complete collection for that, or the ultimate collection, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to read this. You know, if it's anything like Alias, I'm assuming it's going to be a, a great. It might be even better than Alias. Um, I think Bendis does a really good job with like you know street level characters and stuff like that. I mean, he. I would. I, I. I. still liked his Guardian stuff too, but I think this is where he really hits his stride. You know, Spider Man, Jessica Jones, um, and Daredevil. I think it's going to be really great to read that. So as soon as I read this, I'll read this, and then I'll go into my Adam or Adam Ed Brubaker um, Daredevil Omnis and read that after this because it falls directly up from it. So um, yeah, really excited to find this. I picked this up for half price, which is a pretty good deal. Um, all right. Oh, the receipt's still in here for this one. <laughs> uh, my friend told me to get this, and I picked it up. Um, it's by Max Allen Collins, Jim Starlin, Jim Aparo. Um, it's Batman Second Chances. Uh, he told me it was out of print, so one of the reasons why I got it. But also just trying to get some more Batman stuff. Um, this collects uh, um, Batman 402 to 403 and 408 to 416 and annual um, 11. So... Um, it says Jim Stalin's on here. I'm not sure if he's drawing or if he's writing. Um, I mean, either way, I'll be happy. Um, I'm really excited to read this. This seems like really classic stuff that I'm really looking forward to. Again, kind of in the same vein, the same type of time period that I'm comfortable reading and, and really enjoying. So, um, yeah, Batman Second Chance. has got this for like 13 bucks. Pretty pretty good deal. You know, I would say, how many pages is it? Almost 300 pages, so I would say it's a pretty good deal for that. Um, next books I got here. Uh, again, finishing off some some character books here. Um, finishing off Will Pfeiffer's run on Catwoman, so I picked up volume 5 of that. So picked up this nice trade. Got this for $6 at a um, at an Ollie's, so that's pretty cool. Um, you know, I know this is, not, this is not Ed Brubaker, but I feel like if I'm going to read Catwoman, I might as well just read everything straight through. So... This collects uh, Catwoman 50 through 65. Um, so obviously this is following Ed Brubaker's run. So pretty excited to read this. You know, we'll see how it goes. 
So that's volume five. It's called Backward Masking. Um, and then the next book I got here is volume six, which is Final Jeopardy. Um, so I think this is the sixth and final collection of this volume of Catwoman that came out. Um, again, Will Pfeiffer, David Lopez. Um, this has issues, um, I'm guessing 66 through 83. I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> so I'll have to see what the contents are. The sticker is blocking the way, but uh, you can kind of see the back here too. Got this also for $6. So again, you know, can't really beat that price for something like this. Um, and again, I'm really digging the art on this, even though it's not Darwin Cook anymore. Um, you know, I think it's still going to be really good. So we'll see. You know, my friends told me it's not bad. Uh, obviously, you know, Ed Brubaker stuff is the, the, you know, the critically acclaimed stuff, but I think this stuff is not too shabby either. So obviously, if, if, it, if it was if it was really bad, I'm pretty sure it wouldn't get collected. But then again, I've seen really shitty stuff get collected too. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Next thing we got here, another DC book. Uh, this is by Jeff Loeb uh, and Ed McGinnis on art. Um, this is Emperor Joker. So my friends told me uh, this is, you know, pretty much, I guess, Joker. If you had the powers of Mr. I can't even, I'm not even going to attempt to say his name. It's some really crazy name. Um, but uh, really cool seeing Joker go against Superman. I'm, I'm excited to see how that shakes out. Um, the art on here looks freaking amazing. Look at that. That's just awesome. I'm looking forward to reading this. Don't really have a lot of context going into it, but again, you know, this seems like a type of book I would enjoy. So you can kind of see here, it looks, you can flip it upside down and stuff like that. It's supposed to look like a card. Yeah, so that collects, I guess it's just the miniseries. Oh no. Collects Superman 160 to 161, Adventures of Superman 582 to 583, Superman Man of Steel 104 to 105, and Action Comics 769 to 770 and Emperor Joker number one. So just some stuff, I guess. I guess they all kind of tied in together for that event. Um, next book I got here was the first trade of the Rebirth Superman stuff, um, which is cool to have, you know, a good jumping on point, I think, for me. I mean, obviously, everyone everyone who, like, knows anything about comics should probably know who Superman is at this point. Um, so I have a feeling that I'll probably be able to pick this up and understand it a little bit as much, a little bit, I guess. Um, so I got this for six dollars. Um, you know, art looks promising enough. Uh, you know, so we'll see. If I like this, I might collect some more Superman Rebirth stuff. Um, I have Batman Rebirth, so I need to get into this stuff eventually. I know it's very modern, so I could probably read through this pretty quickly. But um, yeah, excited to read this um, and own this. So yeah, cool beans. Next book I bought here was Amazing X-Men. So this now go starts me down the rabbit hole of collecting Amazing X-Men. <laughs> um, and this has a quest for, this is called The Quest for Nightcrawler. This is by Jason Aaron. Um, collects Amazing X-Men numbers one through six. Um, so I guess this is kind of like, you know, this is a story about Nightcrawler. You can see here he's kind of in his swashbuckling outfit. Um, and this is very reminiscent of the Dave Cockrum miniseries that came out um, back in the 80s, I believe. Um, so kind of just harping back to that time for the character. Um, yeah, but now I have to collect the rest of Amazing X-Men. So we'll see. I mean, my friends were telling me that this is like kind of like a, a good self-contained story. You know, it's, it is a volume one, but they said it, it is a good story. So I might read this. I definitely will read this. Um, and I probably will end up collecting the rest of the, this X-Men run. So we'll see how it goes. Cool. Uh, getting down to the pile here, uh, another recommendation from my friend, um, JLA Earth 2. Um, picked this up for six bucks. So, you know, my friends are telling me Grant Morrison um, is the writer on this book. And uh, just really excited to read this. He told me that it's very approachable, very, very good art, um, you know. And I'm excited to read it, see what's going on. So, let me see if I can show you here this art. A lot of DC stuff in this collection for sure. Um, but yeah, so JLA Earth 2 picked this up for six bucks at a second in Charles. Um, again, really cool. Uh, I think this is part of the New 52, I'm not sure, or before it, I'm not sure. My friend would tell me, but I forgot. Um, next book I got here, I'll take off the price tag. 
uh, is Spider Woman Volume One Spider Verse. Um, so let's collect Spider Woman one through four, and then Marvel Spotlight number one, three. So I think Marvel Spotlight number three is I think the introduction of Spider Woman as a character. But this is the first volume of um, Spider Woman that I needed for my collection. Um, there's a volume that follows directly after this as well, which I think I had collected up until like the third or fourth volume. But uh, this one I needed for that stuff. So there's only four issues of actual new stuff in here. Um, but I had to get it. So now I have that. Perfect. A lot of Spider-Woman stuff to read through. And getting down to the pile here, the most, the, the biggest book I have here um, that I got for only $20 and still in pretty good condition, I would say, is um, Invincible Compendium Volume 1. Compendium, sorry. Um, so this collects... Uh, uh, issues 0 through 47 of the Eisner nominated series of uh, by Image of Invincible. So I read this, the back of it, I left out a little bit. My friends were telling me how great it is. And for $20, you know, book this big, you can see just how big it is. Um, I couldn't pass up on it, so I picked it up. Um, and th what's great about this compendium compared to the other Image ones is that this is all in color. So you can kind of see here, I'll try to hold it without breaking the book. So it's all in color, which is really nice. And, um, you know, I don't really know much about this character. Um, so I'm excited to find out and just read about it. You know, everyone everyone has read it. Um, you know, everyone who's a collector kind of has picked it up and recommended it and everything. So I'm, I want to jump on the hype train and kind of read it and figure out about it. You know, I'm just trying to get more stuff that's independent from Marvel and DC. Um, it's nice to read stuff like this sometimes and get a palate cleanser for all, that, all those Marvel and DC stuff sometimes. I mean, it's still a superhero book, but it's a different take. It's a different creator, um, so and it's not so familiar. So it might be more interesting to figure out the characters who go along, you know, um, which I'm excited for. So yeah, pick this up. Probably one of my favorite finds of the weekend for sure. Uh, and then lastly, here, my friend recommended recommended this to me, and I picked it up. Um, it was only, you know, seven dollars for a hardcover, oversized hardcover. Um, and that is Camelot 3000. So it's pretty much just the Knights of Camelot, um, but in the year 3000. So um, it piqued my interest, you know, because I'm a huge sci-fi fan. You know, it kind of reminded me a little bit of Guardians of the Galaxy in the year 3000. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Um, yeah, I'm excited. You know, my friends, my, my one friend that recommended this, to, recommended this to me is really into that type of stuff, you know, Knights and stuff. So I kind of want to see how it works out and... Uh, We'll see how it goes. So, um, yeah, that is my whole haul, guys. Overall, I think I spent around 150 bucks for everything, which, all things considered, um, it's a pretty good deal for what I bought. Um, my stack's huge, and now I gotta go put that all into my database. So, fun stuff ahead. But, uh, yeah, um, definitely would recommend going out to Phillipsburg Comic Con. If you d didn't go this year, next year, definitely go. It's pretty small, but again, um, a lot of creators, a lot of, you know, one-on-one -on -one time to talk with them and kind of get to know them. Um, there's some good vendors there. They're selling single issues and paperbacks like I just collected. So was able to find some good things. But, uh, yeah, guys, this has been my Phillipsburg Comic-Con haul video. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, leave, feel free to leave any comments or anything you want to say in the comments below. Uh, other than that, guys, have a great week, and I'll see you next time. Bye.